to any freshman or underclassman out there who has a passion that they don't know if they should follow or if they're timid about following it, um, I definitely encourage you to follow your passion because following your passion will make college a whole lot easier. During my junior year of high school, uh, I could say I kind of did a lot. Um, you know, I was in general TC choir. I did a lot of sports and things of that nature. I knew I wanted to go to school. Um, I definitely didn't know where at the time. That is until I did the uh, Delta Sigma Theta Black College Tour in Indianapolis. And so we toured the SWAC region of HBCUs. And so that exposed me to uh, many different schools here in the South from Alabama, Tennessee, um, Georgia, all those different schools that I was able to see, and, you know, get to experience. And this is also how I discovered Alabama A&M and my love for HBCUs and that culture. And that's how I knew that that's what I wanted to do next. And that's where I wanted to be after I graduated high school. My family was very supportive. Um, we all support each other. Um, it's all like a high expectation family as well. And it's not necessarily stressful or anything like that and overbearing, but it's just, we just expect, you know, a lot out of each other. Um, you know, we all know our abilities. We all know what we're capable of and I think and we also compete against each other often, and so we um, use that to strive to be our best. Um, I'm the youngest of five siblings, so I have four other siblings that are older than me, so I was able to watch, you know, get to see what other people were doing, what try to see what things not to do, what things to do, and, you know, that was able to help me matriculate through high school as well as get into college and, you know, make sound decisions for myself um, and just use that support that I had to go far and reach high and do what I could you know, and be my best self that I could be. My siblings, um, all of us have at least gone to college, at least tried it. Um, that's one of the things that we stress in our household. Everyone needs to at least, you know, try it. Even if you don't like it, you leave, but you know, at least try. Um, and so seeing that everyone else tried college, knowing that I had to, I wanted to at least find somewhere where I thought I could get the most out of where I went. Um, so my oldest brother, he went to um, Jackson State University um, and then he went to the military. And then my second oldest brother, he went to Purdue University. Uh, after him, my brother went to Jackson State as well and graduated. Uh, my other brother graduated from Purdue as well. And then my sister currently goes to Tennessee State University. And so seeing them go to several different HBCUs, you know, I knew I wanted that lifestyle. Um, I just knew I wanted to have that experience, especially coming from a, my high school is historically black. So coming from that transition from a historically black high school to a historically black college university, I just knew I wanted to keep in that culture. Um, and, you know, we just, they just supported, not supported me, they encouraged me to, you know, try and reach out, go far, don't be scared to leave home. Um, always uh, encouraged me to do what I wanted to do, you know, make the most out of your own life, you know, make career decisions that you want to do so that your job isn't a job. That was another thing that was really stressing my family, um, especially by my grandma. She would always say, make sure that your job isn't a job. If you like what you do, then it isn't work. Um, she said that quite a lot to us. And so my friends um, also say the same thing, you know, do what you've always wanted to do, because I've always wanted to work with cars, and that's why I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, what's that I'm pursuing that degree? Um, and everyone has known that since I was young. Um, so they've continued to tell me, keep chasing that, you know, keep being yourself, keep doing what you always wanted to do. And uh, that transition has followed me into college because everyone here at a who knows me knows that I like car and stuff and they just know like, you know, this is the place to do it. This is the place where you can get those opportunities to work and gain that experience, um, gain the knowledge you need to be able to get that job in that career field. And so, you know, I still have that support here. Everyone wants me to follow my dreams. So cliche as it sounds, but follow your dreams, you know, do what you want to do with your degree, do what you want to do with your experience and make your, the most out of your life as the best that you can. Indianapolis I attended a high school called Chris, Crispus Attics uh, Medical Magnet High School. Um, this was the first black high school that was open to blacks. It opened in 1929. And this was the first high school in Indianapolis that allowed black people to pursue high school. Um, segregation back in the day didn't allow us to go to other schools and so Chris Attics was built and so the history of Attics is that uh, many black teachers who weren't allowed to teach at those white high schools or white institutions um, they taught at Chris Attics and they had the most educated teachers at the high school um, professors with doctorate degrees would come to teach at Attics and so um, Robert S. Morton who was like a renowned uh, a renowned doctor known for his many teaching degrees, he taught at Attics. And so it's just that school, you know, started the foundation of um, our people, you know, pursuing education and chasing 
their dreams, you know, chasing the, their better selves through education. Um, and that happened at Addicts. And so the culture at Addicts was different. Um, even to this day, it's different. Um, Addicts still sets the standard, you know, sets the standard. Um, has everyone turned their heads at us in different ways? Because everyone knows what we're about. We know what we're about. Um, all the way from our band, um, the band that it really gets into the HBCU sound, playing different uh, arrangements of songs. Um, they did things when I was in high school, such as like Five on it, um, Hit them Up. They did all kinds of, you know, different arrangements that you wouldn't necessarily hear in high school bands, you know. They just bringing that South sound to the North, you know. Uh, our roots, you know, expressing our roots and things of that nature. Our cheerleaders were different. We didn't have traditional cheerleaders. We had a uh, Stomp and Shake cheerleaders, which is a style that's uh, more, produ more dominant in the South, you know. Up North is not really, um, stressed about and known about. And so we brought attention to that and made that sweep around Indianapolis and that's starting to become wildly known around Indianapolis now. Um, many schools are now starting to get into that style and that technique. And just, you know, growing up in Indianapolis and being a part of a school that was the source of change and was the source of a lot of new trends and things of that nature, it was able to help me learn and see that, you know, black people are where it's at, simply put, um, you know, we are the change, we are the ones who revolutionize, we are the ones who start these new waves, these revolutions that, you know, change our community, change our areas. And so seeing that in um, Addicts, I knew for a fact that I had to go to an HBCU because I knew that although, albeit it would be of a higher echelon, it would still be the same thing, if that makes sense. It would just be, you know, at a school and that is responsible for all of the change in this area. Um, Alabama A&M was responsible for a lot of trends and responsible for a lot of, you know, advancements in the Huntsville area. Um, whether that be from the students, the faculty, or the institution itself, it's just, you know, we're where it's at. And so knowing that we have that power and we have that responsibility to make a change and to put our best foot forward, um, I was able to just carry these things from my historically black high school um, now to my historically black university. To any freshman or underclassmen out there who has a passion that they don't know if they should follow or if they're timid about following it, um, I definitely encourage you to follow your passion because following your passion will make college a whole lot easier. Although most people say no it won't if you wanted to be an astrophysicist, if that was your, your passion or something like that. A lot of people will say well if you did a liberal arts degree that would be easier. Well that's not true because when college gets hard, as it will no matter what your degree is, it's your passion that will keep you going. Um, knowing that knowing that this is what I'm going to do, all I have to do is make it through this and I'll be able to reach the finish line and knowing that your passion is your finish line, that will always keep you going. Um, Martin Luther King said, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl. And that's what your passion does for you. It makes sure that no matter what, you're always moving forward. And if you do not follow that passion, not only do you cheat yourself um, with the amount of with the amount that you can do in your life and with what you could do, but you cheat, you know, that field because that field potentially just lost, you know, probably someone who could have really reimagined that field. So make sure that you always chase your passion, chase your dreams, because it'll just make everything easier for your life, your schooling, and it'll just give you something to look forward to as you matriculate. And even when you get in the career, it just gives you something to look forward to every single day is going to work with your passion and going to be with your passion.